Hey, Nick, uh, thanks for doing this and hope you're well. Um, you know, during your, your time here so far, you've been able to play a little bit with both David Krejci and Charlie Coyle. Um, what kind of different dynamics does each center kind of bring to a line and how do you think you fared playing with, with each of them so far? Yeah, I have a good opportunity to play with uh, both those guys for, uh, you know, a, a couple games each or a few games each. And um, obviously different players, but uh, um, both, you know, smart centermen that um, like to have the puck and, and make uh, make plays. And um, it's not, you know, too, too hard of an adjustment playing with them. It's only been, you know, some small sample sizes, but I think um, – you know, there's been some good things and obviously some more chemistry develop as we start playing here, uh, hopefully. Thanks, Nick. Our next question will come from Dan Roach. Dan, go ahead. Hey, Nick, uh, just your thoughts on what you've been doing to stay in shape during this uh, whole uh, ordeal. And at this point, would you be maybe surprised if you guys didn't have some sort of finish to this season in some way? Yeah, I've been back at, at, at a family farm back in Ontario. Um, my parents' place here, and I've been, you know, quarantined here and uh, been doing stuff around the farm and um, working out, you know, most days. And, um, yeah, just, you know, running and, and, and do, have some weights and stuff here, and, and we're doing some good stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a horse farm, so I've been helping horses a little bit. And second part of the question with us returning to play, I, you know, there's lots of talk of it and, and we're, you know, we're hoping and praying that, that we chance at some point, but um, I think the virus is, you know, going to run its course and it's been maybe a lot longer than I had thought from the beginning, but uh, hopefully it's something to get back. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Matt Porter, go ahead. Your line's open. Hey, Nick. Um, just is Brett back there with you? Yeah, uh, he's, he's been back here as well um, on the farm and um, you know, a lot of the same things, hanging out and, and working out and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So how does, um, you know, like not too familiar with horse farms, kind of what type of stuff might you be doing there and how might, you know, I don't know, chucking hay bales or something help uh, your training? Yeah, well, as far as training, I, I wouldn't say that that is, um, you know, I've, I, big training thing i mean uh I've cleaned a few stalls of the horses they're, they're race horses so, uh harness racing so um clean stalls and uh you know i guess throwing a few hay bales but uh it's more just to help out my, my dad and my parents and uh i guess there's, there's some physical activity with that but uh most of the working out's been just uh you know your standard stuff gotcha Uh, Fluto Shinzawa, go ahead. Your line's open. Hi, Nick. I know you were you guys were originally scheduled to go back to Anaheim um, in March. I was wondering, were you able to uh, close the door on everything back in Anaheim in terms of, I don't know, stuff, house, all that, or were there still some loose ends that you were trying to tie up? Yeah. Um, luckily, I had a lot of that kind of figured out and scheduled to, uh, to be shipped and moved. Um, kind of before this all started and then it kind of finished uh, just as it started. So I was lucky enough to, I didn't have too much stuff. I just rented a, a condo down there. So um, it wasn't too hard as far as that. I didn't have a whole lot of, a whole lot of stuff and uh, just shipped my, my car over and things like that. So it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, Mick Collagio, go ahead. Hey, Nick, uh, right, right before the Brett question came up, I was starting to wonder if this time away from the game had given you and him uh, an opportunity to really kind of um, uh, butt heads and break down what's going on with each of your careers because it's been so mercurial for both of you. You know, you start with the draft and getting traded and in Brett's case going down and, and in your case, uh, you know, having guys on NHL network criticize you and about your career and all that. And, and, and the soul searching aspect of it and how you see yourself as a player and going forward and, and what the time has been like with your brother to be able to catch up as, as a family. Yeah. There's been some good time to reflect on things and sit back and, um, 
No, I wouldn't say I've, you know, thought about a lot of those things that, uh, you know, I've, I've thought about a little bit and talked about a little, but um, mostly just talked about, you know, um, being in Boston and uh, some of the stuff that, you know, he knows from being there for, for a little bit and then me being there now. And I've only been there for, um, I think it was only a couple of weeks or a few weeks that I was there. So um, just trying to get more comfortable in, in, in what goes on and, and hopefully we do come back. So I'll, I'll have a little bit of an advantage that way. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Uh, our next question will come from Evan Marinovsky. Evan, go ahead. Nick, thanks for doing this. I know you said you're up in Ontario, uh, but how have you sort of, what have you been doing to sort of gain a rapport with your teammates now here with the Bruins? I know you had a short time with them when you were traded here. So what have you sort of been doing uh, to sort of gain a rapport with them uh, over this pause? Yeah, obviously it's it's been tough where um, we haven't, you know, haven't seen the team or obviously practice or anything. And uh, I was there for such a little time. I think I didn't, um, you know, get to know everybody like everyone else knew everybody with me being one of the, one of the few new guys. So that kind of sucked that it, the pause happened, but um, we've been having, you know, talks once a week on, uh, on the, on zoom here and, and just been talking and um, just kind of feels like you're kind of back in the locker room for an hour or so. So that, that's all we can do right now. And it's been pretty good. Thanks, Nick. Our next question will come from the venerable Mike Loftus. Mike, go ahead. Yes, a, a TD Garden relic. Um, I just, uh, Nick, thanks for doing this. Um, I wonder, you've been asked a couple of times about just how short of a time you were on this team. Um, I'm wondering, have you, um, have, you, have you reached out to Andre at all? I mean, he, you know, you guys got in at the same time, former teammates and everything, you know, have you, uh, you know, have you been in touch with him and maybe like swap some notes about, you know, what, what your new team is like and things like that? Or... Yeah. Um, we've been talking, you know, I actually talked to him um, yesterday a little. I've talked to him a few times since this has um, started and we've been went our separate ways. But even back to when we did come over around the same time, we talked a lot those couple of weeks um, about the differences and kind of got each other through it and, uh, I think it was really nice having someone who uh, came from the same team that that uh, you're kind of going through the same kind of process with a new team and a you know a first place team and all that kind of stuff. So it's really helped that way, and uh, I think we've learned a lot even in those couple of weeks, and we're still learning uh, even though we're not there. Thanks, Nick. Our next question will come from Eric Russo. Russo, go ahead. Hey Nick, uh, you mentioned this a little bit, but just the short time that you were there and the here and the challenges uh, that you faced, you almost feel like when the season does start up again that you'll have to sort of start over and, and start that process over as far as meeting teammates and learning the systems and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a challenge. Everybody, maybe a, a little so a little more in, in my case with uh, being so new, but I, I was there long enough where I got to. You know, at least meet everybody and, and talk to everybody and uh, you know a lot of the systems in the NHL these days are, are you know very similar from team to team so I don't think that's as much of a, an adjustment as maybe people think but um, obviously there's adjustment just for playing with new players and um, you know I mean everyone's a good hockey player so it's it's pretty easy to adapt but um, yeah there will be an adjustment but I think everyone will have an adjustment once we come back. Just a reminder for media, if you'd like to get back in the queue to ask another question, you can signal the raise hand button. Uh, next question will come from Mike Petralia. Mike, go ahead. Thanks, Travis. Um, I appreciate you doing this, Nick. I trust you're staying healthy and safe. Um, wanted to ask you about, um, you know, Bill Daly saying uh, yesterday that there's a lot of progress being made towards the resumption uh, of the season. And I'm just curious, when you hear reports like that, if you did indeed hear that, um, if that gets your hopes up. Yeah, for sure it does. Um, obviously, yeah, that's what you want, and we all want to play again. And uh, I think there's been a lot of that talk, you know, for 
you know, months or weeks. And uh, I, I think they're, you know, they're obviously trying to get there. It's just, there's lots of obstacles in the way and uh, hopefully they'll shore a lot of those up and we'll get a chance. But um, obviously we're, I'm looking forward to it. I think it will happen, but um, you know, there's no guarantees, I guess. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Mike. We'll go back to WBZ's own Dan Roach. Dan, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Travis. Uh, Nick, uh, just um, uh, some quick thoughts in the sense of uh, are your parents happy to have the boys back uh, in the house and help them with the chores and everything? Uh, also, um, how strange has this year with what's gone on from the trade to this been for you? And have uh, your parents never ever named any horses after you guys or uh, hockey references or things like that? Um, yeah, obviously they, they are happy to have us home, uh, I think, and, um, help out a little bit and have company. It's nice to have people around during this time that, uh, you can spend time with. And uh, we spent a lot of time together for sure. Um, as far as the horses, you know what, we, we've actually thought about that at hockey references with naming the horses. Uh, a lot of the horses that we do have are already named and we never really, you know, bother changing the name. So um, I'm, I'm sure one day we will, but maybe uh, maybe in the future at some time. And how, how strange has this year been for you? Yeah, it, it has been strange. Uh, I started in Anaheim, um, was there for a while. See, the season was rolling along fine. Everything was good, get kind of traded. Um, wasn't expecting it, didn't know that was happening. So that was a new thing. Got me really excited and uh, got to go to the you know first place team, and then um, we're kind of just starting to you know get going and uh, get closer to that playoff. There was only you know a month of the season left, and this hit, and um, that's kind of been the end. Now I'm back at home, and I never would have thought I would have been um, out in Anaheim at you know Christmas time, and then back at home at this time and uh, not playing any hockey. So it it has been really weird, but. Uh, you know, I guess that's life, and uh, hopefully we can get back playing soon. Evan Marinovsky, go ahead. Uh, so, Nick, I asked you earlier sort of about your rapport with teammates uh, in your short time, but for you with the coaching staff as well, how's sort of uh, – how much have you been in contact with them during this week? How's it been adjusting to, you know, Cassidy and the other coaches uh, in the short amount of time, especially uh, being away in quarantine? Yeah, um, I, I've had some contact to um, to Coach Cassidy. Uh, he has he called me there, you know, a few weeks ago to just to chat and see how everything is. But I think at this time it's it's tough, right? We're we're not, you know, there's there's not really much to talk. We're just trying to everyone trying to stay healthy and and get through it together. So I'm sure once uh, we see that it's going to start coming back, the communication is going to start. And um, I had a good opportunity even before that. I had a lot of you know, talks with him and uh, got to know him and, and how he coaches and uh, the systems and stuff. So um, I knew a lot of it already and he's just been checking in. And if we get the okay, I'm sure it'll ramp up again. Nick Collagio, go ahead. Um, uh, Nick, uh, a lot of guys, you know, obviously dread a trade, not only for what it does to your life, but uh, turning you inside out, upside down, but also what team are you going to? Where are you going to play? And, um, this obviously going to a team that's in the hunt here must be exciting for you. Uh, one of the ways that uh, they fell short last year was a bit of physicality and you were brought in to address some of that. But at the same time, I just wanted, wanted to know what your impression is of the group and how it's matured and what you see when you look at the Bruins and as far as uh, being a team that's got what it takes uh, to, to grind it out and, and, uh, and be standing at the end. Yeah, um, it's it's always been a team that I've um, you know played against, and they've always been top of the top of the standings, a good playoff team. When ever since I've you know played in the NHL and played in the league, and um, just you know I'm on the other side now. I'm playing, I'm playing for them now. So you can just see how uh, you know how tight knit of a team it is. How you know how, how the you know there's a lot of standout players and um, a lot of pieces that. That, that helped win and it's no surprise that they went to the finals and uh, lost in the last game and you know we're that close and there's I think there's no reason why 
um, the, the, the team can't do that again once we get back playing. Thanks. Uh, I see two more hands up in the queue, so we'll use this as a last call for questions if anyone else would like to get in. And with that, we'll go to Mike Petralia. Go ahead, Mike. All right, Travis, thanks. Um, Nick, I'm curious, you, you referenced earlier um, how strange of a year this has been, to, to put it mildly. I'm wondering in a weird kind of way if that might actually help you once the season starts up again, because it's just going to be another um, step out of the ordinary in trying to prepare to get ready for hockey. Yeah, maybe maybe it has. Maybe I'm uh, this this time off will help me as well, and uh, I'll you know it's you know long traveling coming down from Anaheim, time change, all that stuff, middle of the season, kind of a rude awakening, all this kind of stuff, and um, maybe that'll help me that I got the chance to you know sit and think about it and uh, come back and know that I'm a Boston Bruin and uh, just just really you know leave it out there. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. And our last question will go to the sage, Mike Loftus. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Nick, um, the uh, the seven games you played, the last five, um, there were a couple against the Lightning, played Florida, played Philly, played the Islanders. So you played a lot of the, the good teams, you know, kind of the contenders in the East. Um, you know, what did that tell you, you know, about maybe if, if, if there's anything different about the hockey out here? you know, in the Eastern Conference and also just you've kind of answered it, but, you know, what, what your team is capable of, you know, when it, when it gets to, you know, a, a resumption season and, but more important, the playoffs. Yeah, um, we, we have played those, those good teams and, um, you know, what, as far as the playing style, it's, um, you know, the, the East and the West is, you know, a little different game. And um, I think it's just built up because of the teams you play. And um, I think there's a lot of teams out there that you name that have built their teams to play against Boston. And, um, you know, I think that Boston's built their team to play against some of those other teams. So it's – you can see it, you know, a lot in, like, those, those two Tampa Bay games, especially the one in Boston. It was physical. There was – there was it was uh, – there was scoring, there was, you know, the crowd was into it and uh, it, was, it was the playoff style. And I think uh, that's a lot more of what, you know, you would see um, moving on once we get into it with those teams in our division and, and those other Eastern Conference teams. Thank you.